really appreciate you coming. My name's Kelly. I'm one of the facilitators here at Workforce Solutions, Rural Capital Area. And today we're going to talk about selling yourself virtually. So our objective today is to learn the steps to prepare for a virtual interview in the platforms employers utilize, how to get interview ready and prepare for interview questions, discuss closing the interview on a high note and that ever important follow-up. But let's start with some virtual interview statistics. Now, 60% of HR managers use or have used video interviewing in the hiring process. Now, video interviewing platforms have helped organizations deliver a better hiring experience for their candidates. Currently, the top nine video interviewing software used by HR is VidRecruiter, MyInterview, Spark Hire, Alio, HireView, Outmatch, Harver, RecWrite, and Interviewer. Now, these softwares allow them to get to know the candidate's communication skills and personality while also getting all of their questions answered. And the one thing I have to say about these particular softwares that I just mentioned, these are one-sided interview. And if you haven't experienced this process where it's just you and the computer and it's recording your responses and you're submitting them, you really want to get comfortable with this type of interview process. A couple of tips I'll say when you're on these platforms is one thing that will allow you to watch yourself, you know, the view of you. Um, I recommend turning that off because you're trying to make that eye contact to a camera. You're trying to answer your questions and it tends that you'll look at yourself more. So because it is that one sided interview, I just highly recommend that you once you find out what particular platform your employer is utilizing, that you go to their website and get familiar and do a couple of uh, dry runs through it so that you're comfortable navigating and whatnot. Also, as an example, with HireView, that particular software I'm very familiar with, I also refer to it as the HEB interview. It's the software they utilize. Um, one thing I will say when you're preparing responses for these softwares, HireView, as an example, you know, if you don't like the first recording and you want to retake your response to that question, it will allow you to retape it. Um, but I just have to warn you, the second recording is an automatic submittal to the employer. So whatever you didn't like in the first one, try not to repeat it in the second one. Now, 72% of recruiters believe that automation and artificial intelligence will change their work. That being said, 13% have already been affected by AI, while one in four have stated that executives in their place of employment are already preparing for artificial intelligence. However, there are still some skeptics represented by 55% of HR personnel who say there will be no displacement due to artificial intelligence over the next three year period. And then 84% of their candidates schedule an interview within 24 hours of receiving the invite. You know, job interview statistics have shown that when people get a job interview, you know, they're eager to schedule it as soon as possible. It's a natural for a human being to feel ecstatic after getting the invite for the interview. But sometimes this could be that wrong decision. Considering that 24 hours isn't really enough to get yourself prepared for the interview, the questions, responses. So be sure that you take that time when you get that uh, re interview request, that you give yourself enough time to prepare. So read all emails from the recruiter. You know, your recruiter knows that a virtual interview might be a brand new thing for you. So on top of sending you your interview schedule, they'll be sending instructions on how to sign into your virtual interview. Schedule the interview at a time when your energy level is high. You'll also receive instructions on how to use the video meeting platform. 
be sure to review all the instructions prior to the interview day so that you can get your questions answered and you're understanding the process fully. So be sure to practice your responses to the interview questions. And it's always a good rule of thumb to have three to five of those success stories. You know, those are those responses to the questions of tell me about a time when, you know, but they could also help you through other questions like, Tell me about your greatest achievement or how you handle stress and pressure, stress and pressure. So these can always be good just to keep in your back pocket for your interview responses and preparing those to show what a successful candidate you are on the job just helps give that employer the skills and qualifications, how you handle those situations when needed to show that you are the right candidate for the position they're looking for to fill. Now consider scheduling a mock interview. Absolutely reach out to anyone here at the rural capital area and we'll gladly do a mock interview. Or if you know anyone can sign up for a Zoom account, I always say go ahead and sign up for one. You know, record yourself answering those questions. And that lets you kind of go through and see um, any shortcomings or things that you might want to be looking at, your attire, the foreground, the background, the spot where you're interviewing, all of those things. Now, of course, check your computer technology. You know, as simple as this may seem, you want to make sure your computer and internet are in good working order. Now, your computer should be running on the most recent updates, and you want that reliable internet connection. You can check your internet speed at speedtest.net, running a test using the video chat app, or even, you know, one of the platforms like Zoom or Google Meets or Teams. You know, check these out on your computer. Do them with a friend prior. And that just helps you be sure that everything is working properly. Now, be sure and do this a couple days in advance so that we're not struggling the morning of your interview. And you don't want to add to any stress the day of your actual interview. Additionally, be sure to have your computer plugged in that the battery is holding enough charge for the entire interview. You know, remember an interview is a conversation and the last thing that we want is a stop and start in that conversation. So what platform will you be using? You know, employers use all these platforms not only for virtual interviews, but internal communications with teams, field offices, and even group client meetings. So being proficient in all of these is a great way to gain skills and you're meeting those current trends for virtual platforming. So of course we've got the go-to meeting, Zoom, Skype, Cisco WebEx, Google Hangout, and of course, Microsoft Teams. And I can tell you here at Rural Capital Area, yeah, we do our workshops on Zoom, but we also have Google and Microsoft Teams are some of the platforms that we utilize as well within our company. So where can you gain access to all of these different platforms? Well, it's all right there in your Work in Texas profile. So just log in to Work in Texas and depending on how you navigate, you can go right from your dashboard to the Education Services widget. Now, when you go into Education Services, we're looking for those online learning resources and that's going to give you access to the metrics platform. Now, once you complete that registration with metrics, we're going to be going straight to the catalog of the different skill tracks. Just like work in Texas, there's a couple ways to navigate. You see, if you go up to the top drop down menu, just navigate down to the skill tracks, and that's where you can find all of the catalogs of the different trainings that Metrics offers. Now, for this particular session, we are showcasing that digital literacy. When you open up the digital literacy, 
you're going to see a subsection that's called virtual conferencing collaboration apps. And that's where you can gain access to all of those apps that I had just showed you. The Cisco, Google, Teams, they're all right there in your Work in Texas profile via metrics. And you can add each one of those trainings to your training plan by simply clicking the blue link next to the green plus sign. Now preparing the space. You know, remember when we suggested running that video test with a friend? You know, while you're doing that, check out what is behind you. How visible are you on the screen? You want the interviewer to concentrate on you, not being distracted by a TV playing in the background or maybe your laundry sitting on the couch or the fact that they can't even see your face because your lighting isn't very well lit. You know, lighting is a huge factor that you want to consider. Like all interviews, you want to put your best representation forward. So make sure your face is visible. Make sure the area is clean and organized and professional in the foreground and the background. Now close any windows or doors, shut off our TV, silence your phone, even put it in another room so those notifications don't distract you. You want to be sure that you have that minimal distraction. Consider even placing maybe a note on the door so that no one knocks or they understand that you're in a virtual meeting. And then dress like you are going to that in-person interview when you are preparing your outfit. You know, generally, if you're not going to wear it to an in-person interview, then you don't wear it to your virtual interview. You know, like all interviews, this is your opportunity to make a great first impression. And you should look put together and professional, even from the comfort of your own home. Now, again, like an in-person interview, choose something that you feel confident in. You know, your confidence will come across the screen much like it would if you were meeting your interviewers in person. So dress from head to toe, wear those colors that suit you, maybe even wear that signature item to help boost your confidence. But be mindful of those accessories. Remember, you're going to be navigating on that laptop or the desktop. So ladies, we don't want any bracelets or anything that could have a distracting noise. Now, did you know that a study showed that professional dress can boost your abstract thinking and give you that broader perspective? And that's what we all want in an interview. So your body language. Now, in order to communicate effectively, you want to be mindful of both your tone of voice and your facial expressions. You know, as an example, not even the brightest tone in the world can convince anyone that you mean well if you're saying it with a frown. And even a flat tone of voice, you know, not even the biggest smile can convince someone that you're sincere and happy and in a pleasant mood. So another key to that effective communication is your body language. You know, it is that nonverbal thread that ties the other two elements together, and it has the power to punctuate the message you're trying to convey. So if you want to impress your interviewers and make sure to optimize your work opportunity, you need to master that art of body language, even when you're communicating remotely. Now, fortunately, expressing yourself through body language isn't that hard. All you need is a little bit of practice, but keep these tips in mind. First is going to be the eye contact. Eye contact is key, and it is something that we often do instinctively when we're talking to another person in person. However, the mechanics are obviously a little different when you're in that video interview. So instead of looking into another person's eyes, you need to practice focusing on your camera instead. You know, looking at the other person or even yourself on the screen will make it seem like you're looking elsewhere. And that could lead to that feeling of disconnect. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, maintain a good posture. You know, you want to learn how to be more interesting in an interview. Then maybe show more interest to the other person in that interview. Now, did you know this can be done by simply sitting up straight, 
Maintaining a good posture during your interview conveys that you're attentive. You are willing to engage in that conversation. So whatever and whenever you're interviewing virtually, make sure you're sitting in that comfortable chair that you'll be able to sit up straight for that extended period of time. Now mind those hands. You know, there's two common types of people when it comes to hand gestures. There are those who do it way too much, and then there's those who don't do it at all. Now you should find that fine balance in between the two. You know, the easiest way to do this is to practice your interview with a friend, record that conversation. Now resist the urge to fold your arms or sit on your hands. At the very least, you should keep your hands free and make a quick and simple gestures when needed. And then ultimately just be yourself. You know, one of the most common interview mistakes is not allowing your personality to show through in hopes that your act will make you seem more confident, professional, or likable. You know, unfortunately, this can lead to other people thinking that you're overly confident or even worse, fake. So never forget to crack a smile and be yourself. You know, don't be afraid to show the settled nuances that allow you to be your authentic self and natural confidence will naturally come through. It will also convey truthfulness and sincerity. And those are values that your interviewer is looking to appreciate. So the power of the first impression. You know, the most important part of the interview is that very beginning. You know, that's when you have an opportunity to make a great impression. So be sure that you dress appropriately for the event. You know, research the employer the day of the interview. Use what you've learned about them to build a rapport, make a connection. You know, employers eat that up when they see candidates have taken that extra step. Also keep your nonverbal in check. You know, be that careful listener and show that you have the courtesy, the attitude, and gratitude for being a part of their hiring process to ultimately become that team member. Okay, making a positive first impression. I need to pause just for one second. I appreciate your patience. Unfortunately, I can't embed these videos into the presentation, but this is a part of our LinkedIn learning series. You know, if you don't have access to LinkedIn learning the platform, please reach out and we can gladly send you an email invitation so that you'll have access to all of these different trainings in both hard skills and soft skills. Now, what we're going to watch, this particular training, is called Body Language for Leaders. And we're going to watch a segment called Making That Positive First Impression. In business, first impressions are crucial, and they're made faster than you think. In fact, in less than seven seconds, people will have judged your trustworthiness, competence, warmth, and confidence. And once someone labels you as likable or unlikable, powerful or submissive, trustworthy or devious, everything else you do will be viewed through that filter. While you can't stop people from making these snap decisions because the human brain is wired this way, you can understand how to use body language to make these decisions work in your favor. Since first impressions are more heavily influenced by nonverbal cues than anything you say, if you change your body language, you change the impression you make. Here are six powerful keys to making a positive first impression. One, adjust your attitude. People pick up on your attitude instantly. Attitudes that are off-putting are angry, impatient, bored, arrogant, afraid, depressed, and suspicious. Attitudes that attract people include friendly, happy, receptive, confident, approachable, welcoming, helpful, and curious. Before you go into the conference room for a meeting or enter someone's office for a sales call or job interview, make a choice about the attitude you want to project and let your body respond. Two, check your posture. Do this with me. 
Raise your shoulders toward your ears. Now roll them back. Now drop them down. Perfect. Keeping your posture erect, your shoulders back in this position, and your head held high makes you look very sure of yourself. Three, smile. A smile is the facial expression we like the most. It's an invitation, a sign of welcome. It says, I'm friendly and approachable. A tip here is to enter the room with a small smile and let it widen as you look at the other person. Four, make eye contact. Looking at someone's eyes transmits energy and indicates interest and openness. By the way, most of us don't take full advantage of this nonverbal cue. To improve your eye contact, make a practice of noticing the eye color of everyone you meet. This will encourage you to extend your gaze a bit longer than usual. Five, raise your eyebrows. An eyebrow flash is a universal signal of recognition and acknowledgement. Briefly open your eyes slightly more than normal to get this effect. Six, lean in. Leaning towards someone shows you're engaged and interested in them. But be respectful of the other person's personal space. That means, in most business situations, staying at least two feet away. Every encounter, from conferences to training sessions to business lunches, presents an opportunity to network and expand your professional contacts. When is the next time you expect to meet someone new? Plan now for how you want to be perceived by thinking of how you use body language to make a positive impression in those first seven seconds. Okay, let me stop sharing real quickly and get back to the presentation. Okay. Thank you. And remember to please reach out if you need access to that LinkedIn learning platform. So let's get interview ready. You know, you've got to think about what questions will you ask your interviewer? And it is perfectly okay to have that portfolio or notepad ready with those key notes, easy references and talking points. Always be sure you have a copy of your resume on standby, not only printed for you to reference, but also sitting on your desktop, just in case they ask you to email it quickly. That way you're not fumbling to look for it. Now you want to pe prepare your responses um, that the interviewer is going to ask you about the position, you know, and as a little uh, quick cheat sheet that you can utilize. I've helped many clients come into our office and utilize our computers to do virtual interviews. And, you know, one thing that you can do is you could have a little post-it note somewhere on standby close to your desktop or laptop with those talking points that you don't want to forget. You know, you just want to be mindful. Those are there as a quick reminder. So don't look at those. Remember, it's about the eye contact. But that is one thing about a virtual interview is you can have a little cheat sheet where you may not be able to have that in that in-person event. So practice, practice, practice. You know, record that mock interview like I spoke of with a friend. It will help you see any shortcomings. Check your lighting, technology, what you're wearing. You know, you see here on the slide, you definitely wouldn't want to have a lighting failure and figure this out as you turn your camera on to go into that interview. You also wanna watch the angle of where your camera is. Um, how you're able to make eye contact, having your head positioned and having enough headroom and, and the spacings appropriate. So that's why, like I said, let me just share that invitation one more time. Reach out to us if you'd like to do a mock interview with someone here on the staff, or if you're recording with a friend some of the things you want to be sure that you make note of and look for as you're practicing your responses and, and getting familiar with that platform. Also watch out for these tips. So we know that there's a lot to remember. So in the workbook, we have that day of the interview checklist for you. So first of all, you wanna ensure that you're not going to be interrupted. It's so important to be able to have your conversation with that employer without any interruptions. 
Don't forget to clear the desk space. You can have your notepad, glass of water, your resume, but just be sure that you've cleared all the clutter and that you've got that professional um, desk area. Now have a copy of your resume, any of those other notes or talking points, and it's perfectly okay to have your list of questions there for the employer as well. You know, the day of, give your webcam and audio one last quick check. You know, when you did your dry run, the weather may have changed. There could be construction going on, things of that nature. So close any windows or tabs on your applications of your computer. Be sure to check that lighting one more time with your background. Um, and then be sure, you know, I say put the phone in another room, you know, setting it to silent, you might still hear a beep, a vibrate, whatever the case may be. Just be sure that you're not distracted by any devices that are left in the room. You want your attention to be on the conversation with the employer. Now, once that interview begins, you know, take a deep breath and smile. Remember, you're happy to be a part of this process. And it's important to build rapport and leave a memorable first impression. You know, we always talk about when you're researching that employer, things that you can learn um, during that research that can help you build rapport with the employer. You know, I had a client who was able to incorporate the company's mission statement into one of her interview responses. You know, employers eat that kind of stuff up. HR looked at her and said, did you just quote our mission statement? You know, she's been happily employed there for quite a while because those kind of things can help you make that connection that other candidates don't. So always use what you've learned and see how you can utilize it during that interview. Now, if you haven't done virtual, you know, face-to-face -face can feel different through that camera. We don't want it to increase your anxiety the day of or when you turn that camera on. So be sure that you practice with it so that you're comfortable. And then remember to communicate effectively. You know, break that ice with your appropriate small talk, just like you would in person. Be sure to listen to what the others are saying, staying engaged, be thoughtful and honest, and sound genuine. We don't want to sound like we're over-rehearsed. So we've got you. If something happens and you hit a technical snag, absolutely no problem. You know, with technology, there is always a chance that something can happen. So here's a few backup plans to have ready just in case. Now, if your video or your audio stops working, you know, before you go into that interview, as I would say, when you get all of the interview instructions, you know, ask that interviewer for a phone number where you can reach them should you experience any technical difficulties. Should the video cut out, call them at that number. Ask if you can continue that interview by phone or if you should just reschedule. Now, if noise interrupts the conversation, you know, if sirens, construction, something is interrupting your video interview, apologize for that interruption. Ask for a few moments until the noise has subsided. And you may want to mute the microphone if the noise is severe. Now, if someone enters that room unexpectedly, you know, if you have a family member, a housemate, or a pet that enters the room while you're interviewing, apologize to the interviewer, ask for a few moments, mute your microphone, and turn off that camera. Now, step away to deal with that interruption, but make sure that room is secure before returning to the interview and turning your devices back on. To express your personality, remember this is your chance to show who you are, not only your assets and qualifications, but your personality as well. So don't be afraid to be yourself. You know, it could help energize and set a great tone for your interview. And this is where you as that candidate can really make an impact and stand out from the competition. Now remember part of the recruiter's job is to determine if you're a good cultural fit for their organization. So you wanna make sure you have that energy and enthusiasm and the personality to match what they're looking for. And then end that interview on a high note. 
you know, express your passion and interest about the position, show some excitement for the opportunity to be a part of their hiring process, you know, ask what those next steps are, and give that one last reassurance to the interviewer that you are the right person for this position. So the best way to close an interview. I researched your company thoroughly and I was excited about this interview. This has been reinforced by all that I have learned here today. You know, I appreciate the time you have taken and I am positive about my ability to really add value in this job. Is there anything else you need to know about me? I love that. It's like the mic drop. Now, don't forget that ever important follow up, immediately follow up. You know, I have a few clients, they're kind of old school. When they leave that interview, they may go straight to the post office and drop that thank you card into the mail. Or sometimes they'll leave it at the receptionist up front. You know, however you like to do it, just be sure that you do it. Following up lets them know that you're happy for being part of the consideration in their process, but it also keeps your name fresh respectfully with them. So send them that email. You know, if you are that social media butterfly, get on LinkedIn, send them a connection request, make it a networking opportunity. You know, bring up that memorable moment so the hiring manager will put a face to your name. Well, I really appreciate you coming. If there is anything we can do to help you through your job search process, please reach out. That's what we're here for. I hope everyone has a great afternoon, and I hope to see you all at the next workshop.